Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's me, Paul. A question that I get asked a lot here on my channel is, why did I pick CRNA over nurse practitioner? This question is very easy for me to answer, but I know that a lot of you may be stuck deciding whether CRNA or NP is a better fit for you. If you aren't familiar with what a CRNA and a nurse practitioner are, they are both advanced nurse practice roles. So their programs are usually two to three years in length and they are either a master's degree or a doctorate degree. A CRNA is a certified registered nurse anesthetist. They work in operating rooms, procedural areas, outpatient clinics, dental or oral surgeons offices, and they provide anesthesia. Nurse practitioners can also work in a variety of settings such as the hospital, inpatient, and clinic, and they are able to assess and diagnose, prescribe, write orders, and you can go into specialties in both CRNA and nurse practitioner. Working in a surgical trauma and transplant ICU as a new grad nurse, I was very exposed to both nurse practitioners and CRNAs. I was able to talk to them about their jobs and what their day-to-day -day work life entails and if they liked it or not. I had a lot of co-workers in that unit that were studying to be nurse practitioners or they were applying to CRNA school and a eventually get accepted, so there was a big turnover in my unit because of that. Everyone was in school for advanced practice nursing roles. Starting out in the ICU, I didn't know that I wanted to go back to grad school. It wasn't until a few months into working as a new grad ICU nurse that I discovered my love for critical care. I love being an ICU nurse. I love the hands-on aspect of it the most, dealing with the ventilators and the drips and responding to situations very quickly and seeing results within an instant. It was such an adrenaline rush, but also very controlled. And it felt like I could really use my skills within that moment. And I did that every day and slowly grew more in love with it. And so I started talking with the CRNAs that would bring up patients from the OR and hand them over to me after a liver transplant or a kidney transplant. I talked to them about their job and it was just small talk with them and talking about how was school and how did they go about paying for it and just little details. And I finally wanted to shadow a CRNA. And so one time one of the anesthesia physiologist brought a patient up and so I asked him if I would be able to shadow in the OR. He connected me with the chief CRNA of the hospital. I was able to shadow for a day and I knew that that was my dream job. I love seeing the SRNA and CRNA have their autonomy with deciding what to do with their patient and what drugs to give and when to change the ventilator settings and when to wake the patient up. It was just just such a beautiful flow, but also very organized and having just that one patient to focus on was so amazing. On the other hand, I was also talking with a lot of nurse practitioners because we had so many teams that you would see throughout the day in that ICU. Our trauma team, our transplant team, the pulmonary critical care, cardiothoracic teams, it would all come by with their attending and you would see the nurse practitioners assessing their patients before they would formally round with their attending. So I was able to see their day-to-day -day work life in a hospital setting, especially in the ICU. I would see them round and present on their patients, uh, write orders, answer their pagers, and respond to nurses in different floors and write orders for them and writing notes. It was a very different work environment compared to what I saw with the CRNAs. With nurse practitioners, I saw that they had a lot of involvement even through throughout the day because they would still come back and check on their patients. And this is just within the ICU setting that I guess I can speak of because they were very involved. They would respond to pages and if anything went wrong with the patient, they would go to the room and put orders in. The critical care anesthesia nurse practitioners were also intubating. They were placing lines. They were very skilled also, just like CRNAs with their line placements and intubations. They also have that skill, which I thought was awesome, but they have other 
different aspects in their workday that Sierra Nace don't. So I realized that I really like the OR environment better, that I was able to just take care of my one patient per case and move on to the next. And compared to a nurse practitioner where you could have a list of patients that you have for the day and until you clock out, you have to take care of those patients on your list and keep working with your attending and the rest of your team all throughout the day. It really comes down to your passion. It all comes down to what you want to do in your everyday work life. I realized that the nurse practitioner day-to-day -day work life was not what I wanted. I didn't want to go through all that rigorous schooling for that type of work. I really enjoyed what I saw when I shadowed with a CRNA and I did shadow a few more times after that also. Something just clicked inside me that I knew that I wanted to be a CRNA and I would go through all the schooling and all the classes, pay a lot of money just so I can have my dream job. And I don't have that same passion for nurse practitioner. That was the biggest factor for me. I had the fire in my belly for anesthesia. I just didn't have that same passion for NP. A big factor that can deter a lot of people from applying to CRNA school is the cost of the programs and the time commitment of not being able to work throughout the entirety of the program. This factor affects those who have children and a family to take care of and it's just not financially possible for them to give up not working for three whole years. With nurse practitioner programs, most are doable while working and some are even online. Hearing from my own friends who went through nurse practitioner school, they did say that once their clinical started, they did have to cut back and go PRN in their regular jobs. They ended up only working one day a week or even less because of how challenging the program was getting. CRNA programs also tend to cost a lot more the nurse practitioner programs. According to the nurse practitioner MSN tuition analysis, this is by the American Academy of Nurse Practitioners, the tuition cost of an MSN FNP track is averaged from $16,000 for resident students and $34,000 for non-resident students. And that's for public university. Meanwhile, CRNA programs average about $40,000 to $130,000 per year. That is a big difference in tuition costs. When it comes to salary, there is also a difference between nurse practitioners and CRNAs, and this varies by state. But according to salary.com, for example, if you are a nurse practitioner in Florida, the range pay in Florida for a nurse practitioner is $101,000 to $118,000 per year. And for CRNAs in Florida, the range pay is $170,000 to 203,000 per year. Those are the biggest differences between the two professions. I would suggest shadowing a CRNA and a nurse practitioner in different types of settings so you can really get a feel for what they do in their day-to-day -day work life and see what works best for you and check in with your family and see what they think. Talk to your partner and your family and see if you can come up with a compromise or maybe it's just not the right fit for you at that time. But I do know that many people even later in life go back to CRNA school and it's never too late to start or go back to school for your passion and what you really want to do and what's best for yourself and your family. I hope this helps you guys who are torn between the two professions. They are both so amazing. I know many people that I am extremely close to, some of my very best friends who are nurse practitioners and CRNAs or SRNAs at the moment and they all love what they do and they go to school because of their passion. I cannot tell you which one to choose and what's the right fit for you, only you can decide that for yourself. And so if you have any other further questions, you can shoot me a message or comment down below. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!